Hello and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic where I've had a very stressful morning and the best way to de-stress as far as I'm concerned is to try and solve a wonderful Sudoku puzzle and I am assured that today's puzzle is absolutely wonderful. It's called Mirrored Zippers by the master of the zippers, zipper line GDC uh, who has even put a great big Z, Z for zipper in the grid look. Um, yeah, this has been recommended to us a to us a lot and one of our testers actually did it in their spare time as well and said that this is just stone cold brilliant so uh, this is what we're going to do the, the basic idea the only um, sort of variation on normal zipper rules here is that the digits one to nine can sometimes have their opposite value so like a an eight could have the value of two uh, a one could have the value of nine, but only once in the puzzle. Anyway, I'll read the rules properly in a moment or two. It's not meant to be that difficult. This three stars out of five for difficulty. So um, hopefully we'll be able to get through it. Um, now, what do I have to tell you about? Not not much, actually. Just a reminder, if you are a patron of the channel, we've got a couple of things over on Patreon that are a bit different at the moment. We've got, well, we've got my solve of this. Jesper Josephson's incredible circle sum, one of the best Sudokus you'll ever do in your life, although it's hard. That's a two, that's a two hour video. And we've also, of course, we've got uh, Rift Clown's um, interactions, which is, uh, this was the, the teaser for that. Lots of line Sudoku puzzles. Uh, and the closing date for the competition is sneaking up on us. Uh, it's on 20th, still plenty of time. You've still got plenty of time to get an entry in and be in with a chance of winning a prize. So um, yeah, do check that out uh, if you haven't had a look at it already. Um, and the only other thing I wanted to mention is some birthdays today, a few more birthdays than usual. Sammy, it's your birthday today. I think you're over there in Alaska. I know this because your husband Chad wrote to us and I, I think Sammy you might be having you might be having a perfect um, feasting day today because you're going out to a nice sushi restaurant for dinner and maybe having chocolate cake well if you have chocolate cake you have hit the jackpot um, and Sammy I hope you have an absolutely brilliant birthday and I hope you get the cake um, next we'll move over to a different state of the US Virginia where Alex, it's your birthday today. And I know this because Shay wrote to us and told, and, uh, and told us that you are an absolute, you're obsessed with Meryl Streep. Well, who isn't? Who isn't? Meryl Streep, one of my favorite actresses of all time. Um, and um, well, Alex, yeah, I hope you have a great day. I hope you get to, I'm trying to think what's my favorite, what's my favorite Meryl Streep role? I want to say the French Lieutenant's Woman. That, that might be my favorite. That might be my favorite Meryl Streep. That's going to cause consternation. Everyone's going to say, no, 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 the deer hunter or Sophie's choice or something. I don't know. But yeah, for me, the French lieutenant's woman. Um, anyway, let's move on. Olivia, Olivia, you've turned 19 today down there in Spain. You've been watching for three years. So thank you so much for watching uh, for so long. And I hope that you have a great birthday today with chocolate cake. And not Olivia, but Oliver. Oliver has turned 29 today. And I know this because your partner Rob wrote to us and claimed that you watch all the time as well. So Oliver, thank you very much. And I hope you have a great day. And then finally, Wanting. Wanting, it's your birthday today. And I know this because your husband William wrote and said you'd appreciate a shout out from one of your favourite YouTube channels. So that's very kind. That's very kind if you think that of us. And I hope you have a great birthday. Um, and that's all the birthdays done. So we can turn our attention to doing some Sudoku solving. Mirrored zippers by GDC. These are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So we have to put the digits one to nine, once each in every row, in every column, and in every three by three box. Values an equal distance to the circled center of a zipper line, sum to the value of the central digit. So let's look at that cell. Um, so uh, yes, it's talking about values because it's about to get onto mirrored digits. Let's forget about mirrored digits and just put a, we could put a five there, I think. Uh, if this was a five, then we would go to cells an equal distance from the central cell. That's these two cells, for example. And these two would have to sum to five. So they could be one and four. Then we could go to these two cells, which are also an equal distance from the circled center, and they could be two and three. And that would this would be, I think, a legitimate way 
of filling the zipper line. If there were no other rules, however, there is one more rule. It says, in every row, column and box is a mirrored digit. It takes the value opposite to its digit on the 1 to 9 scale. In other words, 1 takes the value of 9, 2 the value of 8, 9 the value of 1, dot, 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 9 the value of 1. So yeah, you sort of swap the value such that the two values, I suppose, then add up to 10, don't they? Each digit 1 to 9 is mirrored once, and unmirrored digits use use their digits as values. <laughs> that is belt and braces rules, rule construction there from GDC. Uh, that's, I, I would have assumed that, <laughs> the unmirrored digits use their digits as the value. Um, okay, but so that means if there is a 6 in the grid and it is unmirrored, then it takes the value of... 6. Um, and if there's a 6 in the grid and it's mirrored, uh, let's put 6 in. We'll have to have a color for mirroring. Probably use red. That's what I tend to use for adjusted values. Then this would have the value on the line of 4. Um, do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Uh, it looks like we have to start with a central box. I, and the reason I say that is if I was a constructor and I was constructing a zipper line puzzle and I had an, uh, any idea at all for the puzzle, I would think it was funny to write a great big Z into the middle. I mean, this cannot be an afterthought. You can't do the break in logic and then think, oh, now I'll put a great big Z in the, in the puzzle. So this, this probably is where we start or maybe the extended line. Um, Although, mm, no, I was just wondering about that line. See, normally on zipper lines, the way to approach them, the only real secret I know about zipper lines is that nine is normally, so normally I'd look at this box and say, well, nine's got to be in the middle. But that might not work here because well, because something has to be mirrored in this box. Uh, and the, sorry, the reason obviously you can't put nine anywhere else on the zipper line is that normally if, if there were no mirrored digits, then this digit would get added to this digit to equal this digit. And we can't write digits higher than nine into Sudoku. But because actually nine, nine, if it gets adjusted downwards, is going to have a shockingly low value, isn't it? So how do we do this? I mean, the the values in this box have to be have to be divisible by five. That I can see, and the reason I say that obviously is that, um, well, those two add up to something. Let's actually just colour them in. Those two add up to the middle. 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 And then there's the middle. So if we count, well, if we give that a different colour altogether, you can see we've got five colours that all have to have the same value in sum. So the two oranges add up to purple, the two blues add up to purple. So we've, we've definitely got, we've definitely got to, after adjustment, by the mirrored digit that must exist in box five, the sum of the remain the sum the sum of everything has to equal a number divisible by five. Okay, so can we use the secret to do this then? Because yeah, yeah, I can use the secret. Right. Well, sort of. Yes. Uh, no, I, I, I sort of can. I sort of can. So, or I sort of am. <laughs> um, let's let's talk about the secret. <laughs> it's something I only share with my very favourite people. But if you're still watching me gibbering on after ten minutes, you certainly deserve um, to hear the secret. And the secret is that any complete box of a Sudoku, if there were no mirrored digits in it, um, because it contains the digits one to nine, won't see each, would sum to forty-five. That is the secret. So I know that this box, absent any adjustments, does sum to a multiple of five very naturally. Now, when we adjust one of the digits in this box to its mirrored value, imagine we, did, we, we mirrored the nine. That, that nine is going to become worth one. 
And that is a difference of 8 from something that was 0 mod 5. In other words, when we divide, when we divided the digits, uh, we, oh, we knew it was divisible by 5. If we adjust the value of it by 8, it's no longer divisible by 5, is it? And the same is going to be true with things like 2 and 8. Whether it's the 2 or the 8 that gets mirrored, the adjustment to the value is 6. Well, it's, that's, 6 is not divisible by 5. If it's 3 and 7, the adjustment is 4. That's not divisible by 5. If it's 4 and 6, the adjustment is 2. That's not divisible by 5. Now, if, on the other hand, the mirror digit is 5, then that adjusts to itself, and everything would be fine. So this box does contain a mirrored 5. And therefore, the sum of the box, the sum of the values in the box is 45, 45 divided by 5 is 9, so 9 goes in the middle still. Although that's very peculiar, because there's sort of a, it's almost like a fictitious adjustment in this box. It doesn't do anything to the value of the thing that's being adjusted. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that seems to be right, I think. So, in fact, this shape would have existed in this manner in a normal puzzle without the mirroring rule. It's just harder, it's just harder to reach the same conclusion that there's a 9 in the middle if you consider the mirrored rule. Okay, so what does that... Well, ah, okay, well, that means there's a problem in this box, a problem that I don't know... I, I don't think it's a terminal problem. I don't think the puzzle is wrong, or I've got the puzzle wrong. But it means, look, 9 is now on a zipper line. Now, 9 cannot be on a zipper line because there's no way. Well, 9, 9, 9 unadjusted can't be on a zipper line because there's no way to make this a 10 or higher. So 9 is now adjusted in one of those cells. Um, now, what does that mean? Don't know yet. I'm just, I'm just going to I'm just going to do that. There is an adjusted nine in the box, so that that's going to have the value one. Right. So can we do mathematics on this blobble here? Blobble being the technical term for the middle of a zipper line. The blobble. The blobble. Well, do we? The minimum value of the of the the digits that are not the blobble on this zipper line are going to be. Imagine this was a one, two, three, four, five quintuple, and a nine, which was adjusted to have a value of one. Then one, two, three, four, and five. The triangular number for five is fifteen. So that would mean these these do actually have a minimum value of sixteen. Sixteen divided by three is going to give us this value as the minimum. And that is higher than 5. So that digit is 6, 7, or 8. Mm. Um. Okay. Okay, so the... So the value of this line now... <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so we can we can we can i think we can compute the possible values of this domino now because if this is six then that line all together adds up to four lots of six which is 24 however that needs to be adjusted doesn't it because the nine on that line in, in getting my 24, I valued the, the 9 as having a value of 1. So actually, that the, the actual contents of that line have to be increased by 8, so 32. That means this domino would add up to... That's quite interesting. So it would have to be 13. But if that's a 6, to do that, 13 in two natural digits would have to be a 5 and an 8.
Uh, that doesn't feel like it works to me. Because if that's a 6, and I've adjusted the value of the 9 down, where am I putting the 7 on this line? <laughs> and what am I putting opposite it? There is no way to do that, is there? So it's not 6. That's a silly, that was a silly thought, sorry. Um, yeah, but this, 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 this line of attack might work, mightn't it? So if we try, if we try it with 7, 7 means the line adds up to 28. We add the 8 on, we get 36. These add up to 9. And if that's 7, we... Well, these are 9 and they'd have to include the 8, wouldn't they? Oh, that's right. That's very... In oh, that's beautiful. That, that doesn't work. That doesn't work for a beautiful reason. That doesn't work for a beautiful reason. I might have come up with two reasons that doesn't work. Just a moment. I might not... Hang on. There might be two beautiful reasons this doesn't work. Let me just think about that for a moment. No. No. I've only got one beautiful reason, I think. Um, right. My beautiful reason this doesn't work is I have no idea what we can put over here in this instance. Because if I put 8 and 1 on this line, and I'm trying to make numbers add up to 9, then whatever I, whichever one of these is 8, there needs to be something with the value of 1 on this side. And the only way of making values of 1 in the puzzle are either to use the actual 1, which we can't by Sudoku, or to use a 9 and flip it round, which we can't because we've already mirrored the 9 in box 6. So this is wrong. Um, and if that's wrong, this is 8. But, well, we have to check this works because I might have, I could have made an error. This is a little bit complicated, isn't it? So let's keep thinking about this. So if we use 8, this is 32, uh, which means we've got, these have to add up to 5. Um, because we get 32 increases to 40, the whole box is meant to add up to 45. So these would be either 1, 4, or 2, 3. And, well, okay, I can tell you that this is definitely not 2, 3. <laughs> Um, if it, actually, it might be a good opportunity. Sometimes, sometimes people don't like me doing this. Sometimes people do. But see if you can work out why this can't be two, three. Um, now, the reason, the reason oh, I'm going to tell you the answer now. The reason this can't be two, three, is that that's going to require us to put the actual. If this is two, three, let's just put two, three in. For those of you who managed to do it, by the way, congratulations. The, re the reason this can't be 2, 3 is that's going to require us to put a real 1 on this zipper. But now, if we think about what we've got on this zipper, we've got a real 1 and a fake 1 in the guise of a 9. Now, those are going to both require 7 to add up to 8. And you can't put two 7s in this box. So it, it can, we, we actually, uh, so maybe there was, was there a cleverer way? Yeah, so what I could have done actually now I suddenly realise is the moment, I always knew, didn't I? I always knew the moment there was an adjusted nine on this zipper, there, there had to be a real one on this in this domino that's really clever that's really clever setting i didn't think of it like that but i i've sort of i've figured it out in the end but i didn't think of it in that that way uh, immediately which i should have done um so this this now must be a one four pair 
Oh, okay, yeah, which which makes total sense because four is a very difficult di digit to deal with on a zipper line if, if the zipper line is adding up to eight for obvious reasons. <laughs> if you put four in any of these squares, you have a problem with the opposite cell uh, and Sudoku. Um, right, well, if this is one, four. Ah, no, yeah, okay. So there's got to be a naughty two over here. This is it's so clever the way this has been put together. It really is beautiful. Okay, because what I'm seeing is if this is one four and these are natural digits, in fact let's let's have a colour for natural digits. Uh, that's natural. Don't know where the naughty digit is in here, but I do know that these squares now definitely include a naughty digit because um, the values of these squares must now be 5 and 8, mustn't they? In order to make sure that the pairs add up to 9, which is the centre of this, this zipper. But I can't put a, a natural 8 on here because of this 8. So I have to switch that 8 into a naughty 2. So there is a naughty in one of those. These squares then are all natural. These are natural. Um, okay, so those two digits have to, they're natural digits that add up to 9, and they aren't 1, 8, they aren't 2, 7, and they're not 4, 5, so they are 3 and 6, and 7 in this row. Oh, we get a blobbled 7 here. A blob, uh, we get a blobbled 7, and the two, di the two pairs, if you like, that have to add up to blobbled 7, don't include 2 or 5, so they must be a 1, 6, and a 3, 4 pair. And that means these two squares are an 8-9 pair. <laughs> okay, and I immediately see this square as being problematic for one of those options. <laughs> okay, because I think the way, what I think what this is saying is that this number, whatever's in this square, I double it to get this number. And therefore this has to be even, I think. So that must be 8, that must be 9. Now, 8 is up here, which must be opposite a 1 on, on the zipper to add up to 9. So 1 is not here, which means if 1 is not here, 1 is up there. So these don't include 6, because the 6 and the 1 must be opposite each other. Uh, these don't include 9 anymore, um, because the 9 by Sudoku is in one of these squares. And the 9 the nine has the value of 1. That means 7 goes up here in order to add up to the 8. That means 7 goes down here, which means 2 goes in there, because it's the naughty digit in box 5 is 5, which, which has the value of itself. So 7 and 2 have to be opposite. That doesn't seem to do... It doesn't seem to fix this line, although it does put a 2 now down there. Now 2 must be opposite 6 to add up to eight. So no, that doesn't no, that doesn't work either. I thought maybe we might be able to um, sort of zigzag across the grid in a zippery fashion and get somewhere with that. Um, can we? So we okay. So we the digits we've not put in here are three and five, aren't they? They've got they're going to have to be opposite each other. Hmm, okay, I'm not, much, I'm not seeing how to do that. But the value of this is either, is either a natural four. I mean, that's the most obvious thing it can be, but I suppose it could be a naughty, naughty six, isn't it? Naughty six would have the value of four and therefore be doubled to give us eight. So that is four or six. Oh, well, but very much more simply than that. Where do we put, um, where do we put nine in this box? Nine can't go on a zipper that adds up to eight because nine can, can't be adjusted anymore because nine's be, already been adjusted. Ah, but there's an adjustment up there. Right, ah, here's, ah, that's it. That's it, right. Because, because, because one of these is the adjusted digit in box six, there's no more adjustments in row six. 
so that the adjusted 5 is now up there, which must be opposite an adjusted 4 to add up to 9. That knocks 4 out of these squares, which makes these a 3, 6 pair, which makes these a 1, 4 pair. And therefore, therefore there is now a 3 up here, which means there must be a 5 down here. So this, this becomes 2, 5, 9. This becomes 3, 6, 7. Now we can get these digits. They're 2, 8, and what have we missed out? 5. Okay, that's there. That's the naughty digit. And this is a 147, a snooker maximum. Um, hmm, okay. Don't see. It looks to me like the middle three rows are now stymied in the sense that we can't do... We're going to need help from, you know, either lower or higher to figure stuff out. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, what, what led me to st start this chain of thought, which I didn't finish, was where was the 9 in this box? It can't go on a zipper that adds up to 8. So there's a 9 down here, which means, yeah, there's a 9 here just by Sudoku. Again, we can't put 9 because 9 can no longer be adjusted. It can't go on any zippers anymore. Um because we can't increase the value of the blobbles above above nine. So nine, yeah, so where's nine in box two? By Sudoku, it's not in those squares. If it was on the zipper, these would have to have a value above nine, and they can't. So I think there's a nine on a blobble. There's a nine in one of those squares. We can't put nine here, so there's a nine in one of these squares. This is not nine. Uh, now that means it's not the red digit, so that's that becomes green, and nine nine is going to go opposite seven, isn't it? So this this is this has become both of these squares. Oh, well, these are always green, but that one that one in particular can't be seven anymore. Therefore, nine in this box is in one of those squares it must be hard to put nine on a zipper though again so nine is not on there that cell uh, right okay and this little arrangement here looks very broken doesn't it because what we're doing is we're saying that two digits i mean this this zipper line is the sum of those two digits. That, that's what that is. And this zipper line is the sum of the same two digits. So the only way it doesn't so the only way that can be true is if one of these squares is adjusted. One of those has to be adjusted. And that means all of these squares are natural. And if that was the adjusted one, then one of these would be uh, mirrored. Now, OK, so so one other way of thinking about these two squares is that these two squares now add up to 10, don't they? Because if, for example, one of these was uh, three, then the other one, then that, that could have the value of seven if it was adjusted, but if it, if it wasn't adjusted, the other one would have to be a seven adjusted down to three. So these add up to 10. And what, what digits have we had so far? We had five adjusted. We've had two adjusted and nine adjusted. So this is either a three, seven pair or it's a four, six pair. It's one of those two things. Uh, no, is that wrong? Actually, is that wrong? Just be, uh, no, that's, that is wrong. I apologize. No, I'm misleading you. I was thinking that because we'd had a nine, um, adjusted nine and then adjusted two. That was ruling out the two eight pair being here. But if the eight was adjusted down to two and we had a natural two, that would be fine. So okay, no, I can't. I can't narrow these down. I almost made a boo boo there. Um, all right, let's go back to thinking about this box then. What have we got? What, what else do we know about this box? Oh. <laughs> right. 
Well, the most <laughs> the most obvious thing I know about this box is there's an eight on a zipper, and that seems very strange at first blush. So that eight is going to have to be adjusted. That's that will get rid of two eight on there, um, because the eight can't be left natural. Because once it's added to a positive number, the zipper should have a higher total than eight. So 8 is adjusted in one of those squares, which means 8's actual value on this zipper is 2. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. Right. And, that, and because its natural value is 2, what digit is going to go opposite the unnatural 8? It's going to be a 6, isn't it? It needs 6 on the line now to be opposite it to add up to 8. So we can't put 6 here anymore. That has to be 4. It doesn't seem to do that. OK, but we can keep going with this logic because now, now <laughs> this is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant because now six needs to be opposite the unnatural eight to make six plus two in inverted commas equaling eight. So where does two go in this box now? Two, two can't go on the line. Because if two's on the line, it needs a natural six, but the natural six has been hypothecated to the unnatural eight. So two goes there, that's two, that's five, that's unnatural. No, yeah, that's unnatural. So that's that's red. This is natural. And that means that is four to make the maths work. The, that is so that's unnatural eight. So this is a one. Yeah, that, that does work. Now these now rule eight out of all of these squares. Look, so eight is now in one of these squares and we know that has value two. So there is now a six in one of the, uh, look, look at what this is doing. It's just sorting the puzzle out. So there is a six in one of these opposite this, which means this is three, this is six, this is one, this is four. There's an unnatural up there by Sudoku. All of these are now natural. OK, and we can't put three in any of those squares. So three is going to be either there. What's three? Three is opposite five. So if that was three, eight, that would be five, six. But three could go there. And then five would be there. OK, so five is always in column two in this box, I think, because because the th the three is in one of those cells, it, the cells opposite on the zipper, opposite the, that three on the zipper always seem to be in column two. So five is up there. Um, can we do oh, one and seven? We must be able to do that. If one and seven can't be in these squares, then one and seven can't be in those squares. So that is a one seven pair. There we go. That was fairly straightforward, actually. Um, so now five is in these squares, which means these squares have to be three and eight. That's beautiful. This puzzle is sensationally good. It is sensationally good. So there, now we've got well, now we know what those digits are at the top of column one. And these are all natural digits and they are two, five and four. So let's greenify them. These are all natural as well. And we can start thinking, oh, well, although. Mm, well, we're going to have to start thinking about how this nine arrow work or nine zipper works, I think. Let's give that some thought. But it's not certain that we definitely got a naughty digit on the line here. Actually, I might pencil mark these first. These are 1, 7 and 8. And they are natural. So I've broken the puzzle, have I? No, or maybe, I'm not sure. Um, no, I mean, these two squares, 
they are the same distance, aren't they, from the middle? So those have to add up to nine and they're both natural. So that looks to me like that has to be a two seven pair, which actually does the seven and the one down there. That's good, that's good. So now what does that mean? I've got eight here natural. That needs to be opposite a one. But that and that one must be a natural one because we can't have the unadjust we can't use nine to make one again so that is natural um and this is four or five ah this is unnatural because i've got four or five here and i need this therefore to have a value of four or five oh i say i was suddenly thinking even the adjusted values don't work but six does work if that was six it can have a value of four and then be opposite five <laughs> that will sort the box out thank goodness for that so we get um we get that digit is now green this oh i tried to just make it green this is now uh adjusted uh most my th threes just disappeared and i don't think we know how to resolve that yet because well, I mean, if, for example, if that's a six, then that needs to have a value of two. So that will be the adjusted eight. Yeah. So we don't I don't think there's an, enough known about these rows to resolve this. I'm not sure, but that feels right, doesn't it? OK. Now. I know one of these is a nine. Which means, no, that, well, if the 9 was here, these cells, these would all be natural, wouldn't they? That's quite interesting. So the way I'm seeing row 2 evolve, if, if, if this was a 9, then row 2 has these squares adding to 27, which would be three times nine, all natural, plus another nine there, which means these have to be the, f the sort of fourth nine pair. So this would be a six and a three into this position, which it can maybe be. And the problem is though, if this one is nine, you could have all sorts of nonsenses going on. Um, on the line then, couldn't you? Which, which might be fine or not, I don't know. So how do we do this? <laughs> how do we do this? Is it going to be something to do with, is it modulo arithmetic? The values on these lines have to be divisible by three because obviously you've got one, you've got X there plus another X plus another X. So that's three X, that, the values. So this is either, this could be three X and, and natural. Yeah, so what are the possible values of this square then? presume it can be nine. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. This is all natural. So if that was nine, this would have to be eight then. And that looks impossible. Because how would I deal with four? I couldn't. Ah, it's that simple. Right, okay. So, if I'd greened that and maybe thought a bit harder immediately, I could have got this straight away. Um, I don't think this can be 9. Because if this is 9, now this line, obviously it has to sum to 8. Everything is natural on the line, so it's going to have to be the highest digit in the middle. But 4 hasn't gone anywhere. And I can't put 4 on the line. So, that is not how we're going to roll, is it? That cannot be 9. So this must be 9, which means this must be 9. 
Now we can use our modular arithmetic. We know this is adding up to 27, 36, 42. That makes that a 3. That's a 6. That's a 2 by mathematics to add up to 8. So we get this all sorted out. Now these squares are 1, 8 and 4, 5 in some order. And that's not 1, so that's not 8. And that's not 4, so that's not 5. These are, where did my green go? They're all green. Okay, so what's now happening on this line though? Now in theory at least, 7 has to find a home on this line, doesn't it? Which makes me want to put 7 here, but we haven't yet... We haven't yet adjusted seven and we do have to have an so that's a natural digit because it's a nine and i'm not allowed to have any unnatural nines anymore so that's perhaps interesting so in fact 10 18 23 so the actual value of the digits on this no the actual yeah the, the value of the unadjusted digits is 22 by the secret so 45 minus 23 but the adjustment has to make it so that that what did i say it was that 22 has to be made into something that is mod 3 So you could, yeah, if you adjusted the 7 downwards by 4, that would get you to the right spot. So you could do that. If you adjusted the 6, that wouldn't work. Although we know we've already adjusted 6. So I better, so should I, fo I'm not sure. There might be a very quick way of doing this, actually. Let me just mull that over for a second. Is there, a, is there just a totally obvious way of doing it? I mean, it feels hard for me to put the 7 in the middle of the line because then the 7 has to be natural. And how am I going to do that when 1 and 5 have both gone? Where, what am I going to do with the 6? I can put the 6 on the line, but it needs to be opposite of 1, and it can't be opposite of 1 because it can't be opposite... And adjusted yeah that doesn't work okay so there was a simple way i think we could have got there by a sort of iteration on modular arithmetic but we don't need to it is simply true to say you cannot put seven here so let me just explain why if this is seven it can't have the value of three so we can't adjust it because then we couldn't make three in two different ways in the row um so it's not it's not an adjusted seven it's a natural seven and now six has to sit on its line and wherever the 6 goes, the digit opposite the 6 is unfillable. So it can't be 1 by Sudoku and it can't be adjusted 9 by the fact we've already had the adjusted 9. So there is a 7 on the line adding up to a number that is less than the value of 7. So we have to adjust the value of 7 downwards. So one of these squares is adjusted downwards 7 to have a value of 3. Um, and... So the next highest digit that's available must go in the centre of the line, which is six. And that means, as you can see what's going to happen now, we're going to play ping pong again. Because now you can't put seven adjusted to have a value of three in this, this domino, because that would put a three in one of those squares to add up to six. And there's a three here already. So the adjustment is here. There is a natural three in one of these two squares. Uh, these squares become green. There's a naughty adjusted digit up there, which isn't even... Yeah, it's not even on a uh, on a line. So it's, it's playing a very strange role. Um, and then we can think again. So we've got three... Oh, I see. We've got twos and fours as well, haven't we? So there's a two-four pair opposite one another. So the, these squares are either 2, 3, 4, and these squares are either 2, 4, 7. And that square is not 4, which means that square is not 2. Can we do any better? Uh, yeah. Okay, one thing we could do now is to note that, look, we've got a domino 
here containing a naughty and a domino here containing a naughty. Now there's only one naughty in each row and column. So this digit is not naughty. So that's natural and this digit is naughty. And we can we can approximately get the value of this. Look, we can pencil mark this column. We need one, four, five, seven. And that can't be, we've already had an adjusted five here. Now what else have we had that's that's definitely been adjusted? Have we had adjusted four? Don't think so. We had adjusted we just had adjusted seven. We found that, so that's adjusted. So this is one or four which means that the opposite digit is nine or six, and it's not nine, so that's six, oh, that's gorgeous. So that's six and four going opposite each other. Take fours out of all these squares. These two squares add up to natural six now, and they can't use four. So this has to be a one five pair. This is so ridiculously clever, it, isn't it though? Isn't it ridiculous? It is just ridiculously good. Um, okay, so five I can see now in row in row seven is in one of those three squares. I don't know if that's useful. Si oh no, hang on, I'll do better than that. That's six, that's five. But I said, okay, that's five, that's one. That's a five in the corner. We don't get any threes in the corner today, but I don't mind that. Now five comes out of these squares um so this has to be so this is now a one eight pair which means that becomes a four look and that must be a five by sudoku and five is the naughty digit in the middle which now can't go in that square so the naughty digit is in one of these two squares now the digit opposite the naughty digit is a four which must be in one of these squares so that's no longer a four And we pause for breath and just to mull things over. Okay, so that's not four anymore. So this is two, seven. And, th and this is just a three, four pair. And we just said the four was here and the four is there. So there's a four in one of these squares. Oh, we, oh, we can do it. We can get it. It's got to be at the bottom. It can't be in row seven or eight because of what we've already got in the grid. And that, that must be a natural four because we've had the naughty one. Uh, and we're very, actually, we're very close to having done all the zippers, aren't we? Which is a bit, oh, that five. I was, I was just wondering how we're going to finish the puzzle then. But I suppose what we can do is we can do Sudoku. <laughs> okay, so the nine we know is the naughty one there. So this is now natural. The nine has a value of one, must be opposite a seven. That must be a three. That's a seven. That's a two. We know the seven is the naughty one on this line. So that's natural. 7 is opposite 3 to add up to 6, so that must be 4, which means that that's 4, which means that's 5 uh, in terms of the digits that must add up to 9. And we know 5 is the unadjusted naughty, well, it's, it's adjusted, but it just doesn't, its value doesn't change. So now this square is not 5, and that square is not 4 anymore. I really want this to unwind somehow. Those are all green. That's therefore not naughty. In fact, probably that's what we're going to have to do next, isn't it? We're going to have to... Oh, look, that's that's naughty. So that means that's naughty. Can't remember what the naughty digit was in this box. It was eight, wasn't it? So that's eight. Um, that's three. In fact, we could have got that a different way. When we unwound this six, five... We knew the six had to be opposite something that had a value of two, so I could have done that already. Now that's now naughty by Sudoku on naughties. That's therefore naughty. Um, I don't know how we're going to do the values. It must be Sudoku, I suppose. What values have we not notified? Ones and throw. That well, that can't be a th that can't be a three, which is one of the two naughty digits left. So that must be one. And that looks very useful, actually, because, oh, it is, look, 3, 6, and the 1 does a different job, but just as efficiently. And therefore, look, now we can do, now we can do the rest of this box by maths. So 9 has to be opposite, or sorry, 1 has to be opposite 8, which gives me a 2 here. That still hasn't done that one. Oh, the 1 does that one. Thank goodness for that. And that's, I think that's all the zipperage done. So that's 2 by Sudoku. That's 7 by Sudoku. 
These are eight and six. Yeah, we can do it. Six goes there, eight goes there. I ought to be able to do this column if I give it a lot of attention. That's got to be three. I ought to be able to do, well, what are those squares? Two, eight, and nine. Yeah, that's an eight. So this has become a two, nine pair. That digit ought to be gettable now. That's a seven. This column needs a one in it. That's got to go here, not five. What else does it need? It needs six, I think. Does that seem right? Yeah, I think it is. I think it needs a six. Uh, and this column needs two and five. So five goes there, two, two, nine. That place is nine here. And if we've not made a ricket, that's an eight. What a brilliant puzzle that is. Um, just double checking, I've filled in everything. I think I have. Yes. Gosh, 51 minutes, that did, that flew past. That flew past. If, if you asked me, I'd have said that was about 32 minutes, approximately. Do I like, yes, I did. I loved that. That is an absolute, absolutely brilliant puzzle. It just takes the zipper rule, which is already a good rule. It introduces the mildest twist to it. And the logic is just beautiful all over the place. And it, it all worked in different ways. Um, yeah, that, that was sensational use of blobbles, GDC. Very, very good indeed. Let me know if you had a go at the puzzle and how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind and especially where they give the constructor an awful lot of credit for producing something that will give an awful lot of people a lot of joy. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.